to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Come on. No. Bub, yeah. Bub means business. No. Come on. Let's get a game. If they come through, I'll give them one tomorrow. It's Franklin time. Is that? I think that's what you meant, baby. <laughs> this game. Maybe it'll surprise. I'm. A, I'm. There. Well, it's not going to. The surprise. fact that Dang you're making it, it about Dang Troy Franklin. It. <laughs> exactly. It, it, it means that this is a novelty game. Yes, this is a this novelty is a game. game that is like. This game is less about fantasy football and more about Sean Payton going back to the Bayou. Like that, this is the storyline that I want to see, and I think that there's like hope because you know he knows that team and that that area well, and the the emotion around it. That maybe there will be a firework or two that's unexpected, but it's really hard to see like how those, Spencer Rattler, the ones that you throw on the ground, right, the little poppers. Yeah, maybe there'll be some poppers out there. But yeah, it's the it Saints is had their moments against Tampa Bay last week without. Yeah, with their Spencer receivers. Rattler. Now, I'm going to watch it. The best player in the game for the Broncos is out. We already know this. Patrick yeah. Sertan is out. Very disappointing. That's not disappointing. No, that, that is outstanding. For this butthole of a game, that's <laughs> great news. That's well said, Mike. <laughs> uh, well, we do. I mean, we get football. That, yeah, Remember those other, those other no. months where there's, there's no football? There's time yeah, where there's not football. Still football time. So, I will be watching. Just not not overly excited about it. Yeah. I mean, we we could uh you never know. Mike, you've got a player in the game. Yeah. You've got Javante Williams yeah. in your lineup. Yeah. It's, it's Congrats. Cool. It's cool, huh? Um well, I'm playing you, so it's great. Uh <laughs> join the foot.com our community. We have begun testing the mobile version of our uh updated in-season app, which means that very soon you'll get the ultimate dashboard in the app and all of the premium content there. So um, not sure exactly when that will hit, but very soon. And you can learn more at jointhefoot.com. Let's jump right into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. No Chris Olave, no Rashid Shahid, no Taysom Hill, who is doubtful. A context on that, Chris Olave, there is optimism that he will only miss this week, which is a little fearful okay. when it's your third um, concussion. And Rashid Shahid is out because he had surgery. We don't know yet whether um, this is a, a trim or a repair. So he this could be season ending um, or several weeks. But Sounds like he, you're talking about a haircut. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it just got a buzz. Is this, did they trim it or did they... Did well, they're, they they're taking that MCL high and tight. <laughs> you know, that's what they, they said. Start with a one and then, you know, we see how it goes. start with a one? Well, it, they might have to bick it. You know, <laughs> they, there's you can always go closer than one, Mike, <laughs> on that MCL. The meniscus, Jason. Oh, uh, yes, yeah. meniscus. Sorry. Taysom that, Hill. Yeah, the rib injury still waiting. Now, I have a lot of teams with Cooper Cup. Yes, you do. He is trending in the right direction, according to Sean McVay, which would be to play this week. I, that could be very exciting. I think he will play. What do you think? I think he'll play. If you're this early in the week and you're training in the right direction to play, it's an ankle injury. So this is one of those things where usually after the injury, it swells up for a while. And then, you know, unless there is, unless he rolls it again, or totally re-aggravates it, I don't expect it to keep him out. So uh, the fact that he didn't go on IR means that he could play earlier than four games missed, which would be this week. So it may, everything points towards him playing, and I imagine if you have him, you'll put him right back in your lineup. Well, I, I feel like Mike caused this next injury because he was so insistent about Jalen Warren being valuable. <laughs> but Najee Harris didn't practice due to a rib injury. He's been getting so much work. It's just – it's Wednesday. Yeah, but, you got to monitor. But the thing to note is Najee did not practice. Jalen Warren had no injury designation. Yeah. So – yeah, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I, think, I believe I believe on Sunday, Warren also did not have a, a in, an injury designation, and well, it was not good. I wanted to mention this yesterday, but I was pretty doubtful about Amari Cooper potentially playing. This is not like Devontae Adams has known this was going to happen for long enough to be in the building five minutes after it was announced. Right. 
Mari Cooper did not. Mari Cooper got into a vehicle and drove to Buffalo. Um, Sean McDermott said should there's have, should have flown. Um, I, I read I read Drive. I'm reporting what I read. Yeah, he, we're, uh, I'm. We're not saying you're wrong. Yeah, we're we're just saying hours on that. It's drive. more Amari Cooper is wrong. Like why, why not? Why not? You know, hop a quick. They say from uh, Ohio to Buffalo, one of the most beautiful drives in <laughs> yes. the country. It's only a three-hour drive. That, yeah. cra that crazy United States. For real. Man, my geography is <laughs> terrible. How, how, what would you have guessed? I would have guessed two days. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> At least a full day. Yeah, no, that's just next Dude, door. I would drive that. Good job, yeah, good job yeah, Cooper. Three hours? <laughs> um, undecided Very where economical. Amari Cooper will play in week seven is the story. Yeah, and, and if he does play again, this is going to be just a, you know, a couple of packages. It I, really is a pretty drive. It's right. It's Lakeside, Lake Erie. It's a lake drive, three hours on the lake to get to Buffalo. We, our uh, our uh, northeastern. Oh gosh, United States geography. Living here in Arizona, not the best. No, but um, sorry, you were saying something. <laughs> Um, about uh, Amari Cooper, would you play uh, I, him if he was active? I'm, I'm going to try to avoid him. He's still. I, I think we said this immediately when the trade happened. Like he's still a player who can come in for a package and get a 40 yard touchdown. And so, if you've got to put him in over a crap player, fine. Uh, but I expect him to be very limited week one. And so, yeah, this is not a player I'm excited to start right now. And and hopefully, genuinely, like for fantasy, hopefully he doesn't play this week. You know, give him that extra week to. Get installed into the offense where you don't have to make that. Ugh. I mean, people. I don't want to. I don't want to play him. People just traded for Amari Cooper. Yeah, those they're not going to trade for him, and if he's active, not play him. They're going to have him in a lineup, and that could be a that could be a pretty big mistake. All right, we have some other injury news. Giants players Devin Singletary uh, was limited. Malik Neighbors limited. Trend. It's we at least got some positive news on Malik Neighbors. Yes, trending towards being able to play. Darius Slayton. Ah! The oh, groin, is he on the, the groin, groin index? Yeah. Of course Wondell he is. Robinson, oh, ankle, ankle injury. Jordan Mason limited. Juwan Jennings didn't practice. Ricky Pearsall returned to practice. So um, the Mason one is, is I think, is, is interesting that he was like already positive. Yeah, that he was already limited. To me, you know, it's all always just speculation. You don't know exactly what the injury is, but when it happened, I expected that this was probably a couple weeks. So. He may be playing this week. Uh, I just checked groin index, and and I I did not know Deonta Foreman is dealing with the groin, <laughs> but he's on <laughs> the groin, groin index, index knows about everyone's groin. Yeah, it's like X-ray Actually, vision. Th we'll get into it in the matchup, but the running back situation in Cleveland is one that I'm having a hard time digging through because we don't know how much work Chubb's going to get. Foreman seems hurt. Pierre Strong, as just a compliment, is questionable. Um, yeah, there you go. What else do we have? Uh, Mike Mike Williams of the Jets uh, might be finding a new home with the Chargers, Steelers, Saints, who have inquired about a trade. And that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Starts of the week. All right, our confidence plays for week seven, the players that we have a great deal of uh, optimism about. Why don't I hand it off to Jason? Can You can start with your quarterback. All right. I'm going to start with my quarterback. Laser Mayfield, <laughs> baby. Pew, pew, pew. Uh, Mayfield leads the NFL right now. 15 passing touchdowns. He has oh, been a man. top eight fantasy quarterback in five of six weeks. He's currently the number two quarterback. It, it, you know, you've got to change the, the narrative of like he is um, – you know, a mediocre average. He was his career is over. Like he's just been a great quarterback, and now he's got the Ravens at home, and the Ravens are a good defense, but they are a true, maybe the truest of all pass funnel defenses. They're very difficult to run on. They're thirtieth in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. They're thirty first in total passing yards allowed. They are thirty second in percentage of fifteen plus pass plays allowed. So I think things line up well for Baker at home. It does not appear, whenever I see Baker at home in, in Tampa, I worry about weather. It does not appear weather is going to be a huge issue. So I, I think this is a player that should be started this week. I mean, if you've started him all season, you're happy. So this matchup is not one I'm scared about, even though 
the Ravens are a great, great team. You have you've made the point that maybe Jaden Daniels' uh, season levels out a little bit. Baker Mayfield at number two, Kyler Murray at number nine right now. If you had to lock one in rest of season, I did want to ask the question. Oh man, um, you know I want to go Kyler because of the rushing I'd baseline, Baker. but Baker's rushing is what has been really surprising. Like Baker is not a pocket passer solely; he has been putting yards on the ground and and sometimes 29 these, 42 uh the last two games yeah i mean on the course of the season Couple right now touchdowns on the course of the season baker is uh, is trending for 385 rushing yards we'll take that all right i'm going with geno smith look the seahawks number one in pass rate geno is number one in passing yards it's just been a really unlucky stretch here with touchdowns his touchdown rate is only at 2.4 percent despite leading the, the league in passing yards. Like the over under against Atlanta is 51 points. Atlanta's allowing the highest completion rate in the NFL. This is like this Seahawks Atlanta game. I am very excited for all the pieces in this game. I totally disagree. I'm going Kirk Cousins in the same game, <laughs> taking on Seattle uh, at home in a dome with a 50 plus total. Let's go. Falcons, number one in neutral pace. Um, yeah, the, the pace for. Both that's what's great. The pace for both of these teams, like there's going to be so many extra plays compared to all the other games this week. It's awesome, and uh, I'm looking forward to. It. So I'm going to go Kirk Cousins there. Uh, I love it at running back. I'm going with J.K. Dobbins. Uh, yes, the Dobbins is against Arizona on Monday Night Football. He is the clear lead back with Gus Edwards on IR last week. Season high, 73 percent of snaps, 27 opportunities. He's been a top 12 back at three of five games. And the matchup against the Cardinals is is pretty much exactly what Harbaugh's high T approach requires, requests, delights in. Uh, Arizona's opponents are running the ball at the third highest rate in the NFL. And Harbaugh's sitting here being like, I don't want to be third highest. I want to be highest. I want to just run the ball. So this is perfect. And over the last four weeks, Arizona's 24th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to running backs. If you've got Dobbins, force him in the lineup. I, I did notice Gus Edwards on IR. His snap count went down to zero last week. It did. Yeah, he didn't even get on the field. No, no. Yeah, of Vidal Sassoon. I don't look. I'm not in that. I'm not in his hive. I'm not on that part of draft Twitter. Some people love him. But J.K. I don't know if J.K. Dobbins can hold up to this. Like the the work he's about to get over the next couple of weeks. Wait, you think Dobbins can get injured? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> that here? is, in fact, what I am saying. So. I think that if if you have Dobbins, I think Vidal is a pretty high priority uh, insurance running back to put on your deb or on the uh, on your bench. So just throwing that out there. Um, I, yeah, I mean, just speaking of that. So Mike and I, we we've got our champ 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 team. Yes, and we've got Dobbins, and we're like, Dobbins is a monster yeah. rest of season. But we both know, like, that's until he gets in. Like, we're just waiting yeah. for the shoe to drop on the end. Is that so your champ 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 not champ? Team? Yes, it is. It's Got our it. champ, 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 not champ, about to be champ. Okay, team. just making sure. I'm making a call here with Ramondre Stevenson missing last week and missing practice on Wednesday. If that holds up, Antonio Gibson versus the Jacksonville Jaguars is my start of the week at the running back position. Obviously, do changes. You have, do you have a boo button? Uh, what are you I booing? Do. Uh, Antonio do. Gibson? Now, are you want, this is you, not me, right? Yeah. All right. Okay. That's fine. With Ramondre out last week, he look he was the clear lead back. Uh, he saw thirty percent of the team's total rush attempts and targets. That is an elite percentage. Jacksonville is hashtag bad at everything. Like the starts of the week could literally just be all skill players who are playing against the Jacksonville Jaguars these days. They're they're awful. But Gibson, the work will be there. The targets should be there, and I think that that the Patriots can put up points against the Jaguars. 13 for 19 last week. That didn't concern you? 1.46 a carry in that role? <laughs> it's a Jacksonville story, isn't it? Yes, it's 100% the matchup and and targets. Um, Carolina, their defense against the run is atrocious. Uh, I'm going double barrel. Austin Eckler, Brian Robinson, Washington running backs against Carolina. Eckler in particular has been uh, number one in the NFL in yards per touch. Brian Robinson's supposed to be back, so you can play him. He's probably going to score. But Eckler has looked electric, and I think both guys deserve to be in your lineup. 
Eckler's yeah. been so good. Eckler, I, I really want him to get the opportunity to just be the dude. Like, Brian Robinson's been injured, but he comes in on the goal line or whatever. It's like, if you gave Eckler a game where you said, hey, you're going to get the carries, you're going to get the passing yardage, you're just an every down back, he would dominate. Um, at wide receiver, my start of the week, Deontay Johnson, who has been a revelation with Andy Dalton. Since Andy Dalton became the quarterback, he's averaging 11 targets per game, and he's been a top 12 wide receiver in three of four weeks. He actually leads the entire NFL in end zone targets, despite having two weeks with a uh, clipboard holder named, uh, checking notes, Bryce Young. Mm. Uh, mm. I remember I him. Do, why you got to do that? Yeah, we've, moved, that we've moved on. Well, I, I've moved so far on that I don't even remember who that is. Uh, but on the matchup side, Washington is another defense you want to target. Their offense has been scoring points. You're going to have to keep up. They're allowing the fifth highest yards per attempt, and they rank dead last in explosive play rate allowed on the year. So Deontay Johnson should have targets, catches, receptions, yards, and good chance at a touchdown. That's, catches that's a, and receptions? Yeah, he's going to double, double up. up. Well, he sometimes he'll like bobble it to himself. Okay. That's a catch and a reception. Okay. <laughs> sure. I'm going with a confidence play of Jordan Addison against the Detroit Lions. This is a another matchup thing of you can't run on Detroit. They're probably going to be without Aaron Jones. At least that's the way it is trending right now. And it's just but you can pass on them. Before the last week's dud by Dallas, Detroit was thirtieth in schedule adjusted points to the two wide receivers. And like I he should see lots of one and one opportunities because Justin Jefferson is there and the A dot. 17.3 that is Jordan Addison's average depth of target that is a it just takes a couple shots to make an entire week for fantasy and it's a it's a rare thing when I want to throw this guy into my lineup but Zay Flowers against Tampa Bay he has gotten it going the last two weeks um, seven for 111 nine for 132 32 percent of the team's targets in that span the Buccaneers you just mentioned it Baker Mayfield they're going to be a they're going to be able to put up points sorry who laser Mayfield <laughs> Uh, you got you. You got to pepper it in. You can't hammer it. If you over say the head. his name, I hit that button. You have to let the laser charge up. You know what I mean? The what? <laughs> Zay Flowers against the Buccaneers uh, defense that is 29th in schedule adjusted fantasy points given up to wide receivers, uh, which you can go look at the strength of schedule tool inside of the Foot Clan tools and take a look at these numbers. 26th in percentage of 15 plus pass yards allowed. It's not Andrews. It's not likely. It's Zay. Which is, is, I'm still sad for Mark Andrews, but the fact that how good I've, you know, going back to last year of just how good I think Zay Flowers can be. And then it was just, it was a lot of gimmicky crap of like, hey, let's short area, let's let him be so twitchy and he'll do everything. Like his involvement the last two weeks is very exciting because he is an immensely talented player. So if we're actually getting him good targets that are intermediate and everything, it's that's excellent news for yeah, Zay Flowers. Lamar is on pace for 4,300 passing yards. So that, I mean, that's what Josh you dream Allen, of. Josh Allen, 3,200. Gross. Yeah. We'll yeah. see if Amari Cooper changes things there. But Amari Cooper changes things here. My start of the week at tight end is David Njoku. I know Mike is worried because oh, he no, – hey. Process says this should be Process fantastic. says this is good, right? Last week, he already had a 30% target share. Now you delete Amari Cooper out. I think he's the number one target in this offense. He's close to the line of scrimmage. Voldemort should be able to get the ball to him. Um, also, the matchup is great. Since he ranks 24th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to tight end, but it's not just this year. If you look back at last year, they were 30th. So this is like we're, we're a year and a half into knowing that this is a team that you beat at the tight end position and David Njoku is the number one target in this offense, or at worst, the number two if Judy steps up. So I, I think he is a startable asset that I saw you know, ranked really low in, in, in some places. I think he should be started this week. And I'm going to do it. It's Kyle Pitts against the Seattle Seahawks. Like I, I said, I almost did it. You did it? I almost did it, but Njoku was I, there. Just because of the matchup? I yes. want pieces of this game. I already said that. 51 point over under. Atlanta's pass rate is skyrocketing. He is quietly the tight end eight on the season. Seattle allowing the seventh most catches and third most receiving yards to the tight end position. We're talking 70 yards last week, 88 yards the week before. The, the, the Falcons are opening it up. And in this tight end economy, Kyle Pitts, I think, is a pretty strong play. I'm going to go with Sam Laporta, the one catch man. 
One catch. Last week he finally got on board, 52-yard touchdown. You've got to throw against Minnesota, but the pass rush um, and the defense is very good. I think Sam Laporta is going to fit right into this uh, high over under. Minnesota, you know, coming off the bye week, they've seen the third most total pass attempts from their opponents of any team. So I think they're going to throw the ball a ton. I think it's time to get on board with Sam Laporta. All right, we're going to take a break, and we'll get back into uh, our breakdowns for this week's games. It's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. If there was a reason to wake up, this ain't it. The New England Patriots, one in five, taking on the one in five Jacksonville Jaguars. I'll catch the second here. Uh, I'll be up. I'm always Yeah, up. I'll watch <laughs> I'll be watching. Thing. But uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Jacksonville, uh, I mean, it's at home. Guys, I, well, that how, for Jacksonville, kind of is. It, I was going to say this is a legitimate home game for Jacksonville. Last week was not necessarily. They're obviously on the other side of the uh, earth, so <laughs> they're not in their home stadium. However, it's actually a three-hour drive from Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, you can get. Dude, my geography <laughs> yeah, is you can wrecked. Get straight into London. Um, that's incredible. Uh, but here's the thing: the New England Patriots are one in five. This is not the type of team where their fans are going. We got to go to London to watch this game. So I, I Jacksonville's been there two weeks in a row. Um, I, I think this will be mostly a home game for Jacksonville. Well, they're one and five as well. They're five and a half point favorites. The over under is forty two and a half. It gives them twenty four points. New England eighteen and a half. Drake May did get an MRI on his knee. Something to monitor. Did you see? Uh, not that any of us want to go backwards into the Jacoby Brissett era. I was looking that up this morning because I was curious with, with the Antonio Gibson start of the week. Like you know, they they said there's absolutely no concern with Drake made this morning. He was spotted walking without a limp, without a brace, without that a wrap. Not, I mean, you don't get an MRI for no reason. No, no, no. You get an MRI because you have a scare. Uh, there are. Oh, you're saying times, that post MRI there's po no, no yes, worry. Yes, post MRI they said that there's no concern, and this morning he was there without a limp or a wrap or anything on his knee. The so I do think it's okay. The report I saw was so weird. It was uh, the team is not concerned at all about Drake May's knee, and but they're going to allow him to go <laughs> to get an MRI. Here's the deal: they're the worst offensive line in terms of giving up pressure. And the risk of Drake May getting hurt at any given week. I mean, Jacoby Brissett, not mobile. Drake May, more mobile. The, the pressure rate's still number one in football, and that is a major issue. It's almost 50% of the time they're giving up major pressure on the quarterback. The, the, ni the nice thing is that the Jacksonville Jaguars don't bring a lot of pressure, despite having Josh Allen hyphen whatever um, – on the Jags, they they have not been getting after the quarterback. So hopefully Drake May has a second or two to throw because the offensive line is trash. The problem is, do you have any confidence in playing anybody that he would be throwing to? Hunter Henry got into the end zone. Pop Douglas broke out for a big game, but that is not necessarily prescriptive. Mike mentioned Antonio Gibson because the Jacksonville matchup is very very good, and if they give him opportunity, he'll probably be better than the one point five a carry from last week I actually I, you know I, do, I can see that I do think Hunter Henry is one of those guys where if you're looking for a waiver start this week personally in league of record that's what I did I picked up Hunter Henry he had five targets last week in his first matchup and this is a really really good like 30th on the season um at giving up fantasy points to tight ends is Jacksonville so I, it matches up well enough on the other side, Brian Thomas Jr. dropped the touchdown last week. His DK receiving line's at 55! He's still got the ninth most receiving yards in the NFL. I love him, and I love Evan Ingram. And then I'm pretty nervous about every other starting option on the Jacksonville side, including Tank Bigsby, because, I, you know, the, the snap count, the snap percentage, it, it was worrisome last week. The fact that in a game where ETN missed, he could only get seven opportunities on the ground and no targets tells you that the floor in a game like this is a little lower the, the, than you'd like. The floor in a game like this is lower, but I don't believe it's going to be a problem. I am actually – like uh, there is risk. Don't hear that there's not risk, but 
I'm bullish on Tank Bigsby this week. I, I, I think it's a good matchup for him, and I really think it's kind of a game script thing. Last week, Chicago went to London and just humiliated Jacksonville. Caleb looked great, threw four touchdowns, and then they had to pass. And the passing work does go to Dearness Johnson. That's not Tank can get involved in the passing game, but when they're in like the two minute drill type of offense, that's going to be Dearness. I just can't see New England popping out to a two touchdown lead and forcing Jacksonville well, to have to throw the ball so much in that style of an offense to keep Bigsby off the field. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of one of those things where if we're going to sit here and say that Jacksonville's defense is the worst in football and Drake may put up a good fantasy week last week, the the, the possibility of that happening is not zero. Like, no, it's, they moved it's the football well last week with Drake May at times and they're playing a much worse defense. So sure, but, but I mean, also, Chicago's four and two versus a one and five Patriots team that has looked pretty happy. I, I mean, it, it was who, also, who do you have winning the ball game then? I've got Jacksonville winning. I've got New England covering the spread. Jacksonville dropped what four touchdowns? Like that's not a normal thing. That's pretty normal for them. <laughs> I mean, like at this point, it's actually okay, more, more than more than other teams. But four in a week, it. Like you just you bring in some of those touchdowns and the game looks so much different. I'm just not excited about this game. That's fine. Oh, who is? Because I don't know if the personnel on New England can take advantage of the bad defense, and I don't know if the offense of Jacksonville can, you know, be consistent enough over long drives without Travis Etienne to get it done. Yeah, I mean the the only the only thing obviously Brian Brian Thomas is great, Evan Ingram is great, but I do think Tank Bigsby the matchup. New England's got a decent defense, but they're more of a run funnel. Uh, it's going to be hard to throw on them. So I think Tank Bigsby, who has looked outstanding on a per-touch basis this year, eh, I, I mean, for my team, I'm starting Alexander Madison. Get, I will trade. If <laughs> someone's out there and they will trade me Tank Bigsby, I'm in. Seattle at 3-3 three and three takes on the Atlanta Falcons, who are 4-2. and two. And the DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Atlanta minus 3, the over-under is 51. I want this game. Yep. 51 points. So there's there's two games this week that I think most fantasy players are very very excited about this one and the um the Detroit Minnesota game with over fifty points mm -hmm. that one scares the tarnation out of me because both of those teams have really good defenses um so I could see how it goes bad this one man the pace of play everything you guys were laying out in your starts of the week I really am excited for this game Gino and Kirk Cousins both starts of the week. Bijan Robinson scored twice. Algier was dominant. He's a question mark for this game in terms of who you'd rather start, Algier or someone like Mosert or Javante or Madison. You know, I do think that this team liked what they saw. They've always enjoyed riding the power back when it's working. I don't think it'll be working as well as it did against Carolina last week. Most of those other names I think I would go with ahead of Algier but he is someone you can start. Seattle's defense, twenty second against the run. Kenneth Walker, oh, start him up. Yeah, I mean the Falcons' defense has been really good at slowing down uh, opportunities for the running game. Walker, so uh, was Detroit. <laughs> it, Walker yeah, goes the nuts. question is, do does does Ken Bone continue to get the usage that he has been getting, which is twenty one targets in the last three games? If those, if the targets are there, then. Even if it's a bad game on the ground, it won't matter. Yeah, the last two games on the ground were bad. He's averaging mm -hmm. 2.7 yards per carry over the Giants in the San Francisco game, and Atlanta's pretty good between the tackles, but he's had eight targets in each game, which has made Mike... Um, Very happy. Yeah. yeah. Tingly is yeah. what I was going to go mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. Drake London, red zone monster, DK Metcalf right into your lineup, and then the Mooney, JSN, Lockett, hits those peripheral options somebody's going to hit I just I, I just think the predictability is going to be difficult you know if it's Pitts, it's not Mooney maybe if it's Mooney it's not Pitts. um Lockett's kind of got a ceiling it seems in this offense where um I I, I could have paid up for him as a spot start this week and chose not to off the waiver wire because I do feel like he's kind of a four for 60 guy in this offense. Yeah, that's fine. And well, if he scores, I'm happy. And if he's not, I'm not happy. Uh, Mooney over there, his DK reception line is four and a half right now. Like that, I'll take that. That I think that's healthy enough. It's would you play yeah. him over Jason? 
Darnell Mooney, yes. It's and I think JSN's a fine play. Like that's the thing of this game. Everybody could have a great game. Or sorry, not every player at the exact same time, but pieces of the of this game. They, there yeah, could be, there could be, be good. many. There could be several really good games in this atmosphere. So that's why they're playing. You it's you're playing that game of probability and hoping that your player is the one who goes off. And Last three weeks, Drake London double digit targets. He is the wide receiver five on the season. Oh, it's it's happening. He is scoring it's at Jay, will. Would you Jason rather have the him curse. than Devontae Adams rest of the season? Oh, that one's close. I think I would rather have Drake London. Um, as Mike just alluded to, I did break the curse yep. um of our C D uh It's not our model. It was trade. your trade. Well, no, no, no. But you guys We had nothing it. to do with it. Uh I I <laughs> Reek Woolen, it was we'll have magic. to we'll have to um, monitor see if he's going to be active because yeah. if if Reek is out, oh, even better. I mean that is that is uh, perfect for Drake London. If Reek is in, it might be better for Darnell Mooney. Tennessee one and four, Buffalo four and two, DraftKings Sportsbook line, Buffalo at home minus nine and a half. Oh, the over <laughs> under is forty one. So, Tennessee's got fifteen point eight. I Fantasy mean, or uh, real points. <laughs> yeah, Josh Allen, and then the Josh Allen impersonator, who um, you know he's like a bad Elvis impersonator. Like you know <laughs> immediately, it's not Josh Allen when you watch. Allen may or may not have Cooper in this game, but nevertheless, um, you know it's not been a pass-heavy offensive game plan for Buffalo, and it probably will not continue to be. James Cook will be monitoring if you picked up. You know, Ray Davis last week, congrats. Back, back up back up running back for uh for Monday night. Oh yeah, no way he gets a start. But he'll get carried too. Twenty three opportunities last week for Ray Davis. And so, looked so good. You know, that is a player that if, if Cook's you know, if Cook's back in, Ray Davis is on your bench, right? Yes. Correct. And the Titans defense has been the one bright spot keeping them keeping them close enough in games where Brian Callahan can be furious with the mistakes that Will Levis makes. Right. The games are close enough to where it is in the balance on a regular basis and Will Levis ruins it. Um, never had a tweet watched or seen more than the uh, Calvin Ridley target tweet this past week because the world has felt that pain. Some people want to be, but he knew what he was getting into when he signed there. It's his fault. You know, they started Will Levis. This was that the the team didn't draft a quarterback. They could have, by the way. They could have. They had like what the sixth pick in the draft, something like that. They I mean, where were they? They took an offensive I don't lineman. Remember. Go 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 look that up. They were a top ten. Right? I will go look. Um this this was a team that could have made a decision to go a different they, direction. They were picking at seven. Yeah. So I mean that's that's they the, could have taken J.J. McCarthy. They could have taken J.J. McCarthy or, I mean, former – or not former, first-round pick, number eight overall, Michael Penix Jr. The point was that this team made a wrong decision. They got rid of Malik Willis, and then they didn't draft a quarterback, and then they hung their hat on Will Levis, and it's it's not – it's not been good. I, you know, they've talked about, like, it just hasn't looked the same as it did in training camp, and I think that Will Levis – was a little bit of fool's gold. You know, it looked good. It looked like, hey, we've got – he's got great arm talent. He really yes, does. He does. He's got great athleticism. He um, flashed last year during games. He had big games as a – Oh, his first game was – Yeah. He, I mean, Will Levis is fool's gold. Like, he's he is fooling people that he's um uh, great. But, I mean, 10 turnovers, seven interceptions. Keep in mind they've already had their bye. So, <laughs> <laughs> this is in five games played. He's turning the ball over twice a game. That's you just even though you've got a good defense, you can't win with Will Levis. So how just how are you approaching this for fantasy football? Because for me it's Tony Pollard, his yes. his DK rushing lines at sixty three and a half, and you can run on the Bills as we saw, you know, whatever basically every game this week, but really last week. Uh that's and that's it. Like I will not subject myself to the pain of anybody else. If you if Ridley has a game on your bench, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, because you maybe have some hope. Brian Callahan coming out again, saying how integral he needs to be. Eight targets last week. No, really. wink, wink. Yeah. So what would you say? Like three targets? I would say, I would say <laughs> one. Really? I think there were. I think there were three targets. Yeah, that's fine. Not catchable. 
One. Do you, do you know that? It, do you know that he's one listed catchable. with zero catchable? Well, that's dumb. He had one that was definitely catchable. I know he caught it and it was stripped. But yeah, if you catch it and it's stripped, I know it has it's to catchable. Be a catchable but, the, but the metric literally said three that that or zero that I that I saw. Look, we are. They had the buy right, so we've had five games of the Will Levis experience. Just kidding. We've had four right because one was Mason Rudolph. So we've had four games with Will Levis and Calvin Ridley. One was incredible. Three were nauseating. But I do. I you have seventeen games in a season. They've played four together. So, does it improve? I don't know. But you have four games. That's all I'm saying. If it does, it's happening on my bench. This game really yes. is actually pretty easy because if James Cooks, if James Cook plays, he's in. Otherwise, it's Ray Davis. Josh Allen's always in. Tony Pollard's always in, uh, especially in this matchup. And then I don't think you want to deal with any receiving option other than Don Kincaid, who is only because he is in the tight end position, you're going to keep rolling him. I mean, otherwise... You don't want a wide receiver here, right? And on either side of the ball? Uh, no, and I mean, if I had a, the honest truth, I'm just going to be straight up. If I had Amari Cooper and he's playing and I'm sitting there with, do I play Valet or Bub Means over tonight or wait on Cooper to see what happens? I'm going to wait. I'm going to tell you, the, I'm going to wait. Because there, even okay. if he doesn't play a full allotment of snaps... Okay, let me give you a couple other I'm gonna names. I'm going to try to ca capture one big play. That aren't that low. If you had uh, Josh Downs with Anthony no, Richardson... No, I'll play Downs. Okay, Christian Kirk. Been up and no, down. No, no, no. I'll wait on Cooper there. Really? Okay. Um, Demario Douglas in the same game. No, I'll wait on Cooper. Okay. Xavier Worthy? Uh, I'll wait on Cooper. Okay. You're a little higher on Cooper than me. <laughs> but not much, and I don't, I don't blame you there. And, he's, a, he's a good player. Yeah, I mean, and if, if Cooper was out and you had Shakir, or you could get Shakir on the, you know, do, for nothing because that manager doesn't want him anymore, and you could start him in place of uh, Cooper. Yeah, could be worse. Dalton Kincaid, yeah. limited with the collarbone. I hope. I hope Cooper helps. You know, you talk Unlocks about unlocks. You talk about in this stuff. in this economy. I mean, Dalton Kincaid is the tight end eleven right now. That's. Eh. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, uh, yeah. tight end eleven is a, a streamable, startable, not good enough asset for fantasy. He played eighty percent of snaps last week, caught six passes, just fifty-one yards. If I'm the Dalton Kincaid manager, I am looking to see if I can find some other. Yeah, you're picking up Pat Fairmuth off the waivers uh, in hopes that Russell Wilson. <laughs> oh, did I uh, did I see that? Because you are the Dalton Kincaid manager, and oh. you did pick up Pat oh, Fairmuth yeah. off the of waivers just because you got to. And keep... what do you think? I don't blame you at all. You got to keep shooting your shot. You know, it's it's like a uh, in a couple leagues. A Muth couple currently weeks ago. has more points than Dalton Kincaid. And with Russell yeah. coming in, and then yeah. having no one else to throw to. It's worth a shot. Yeah, you got to you've got to grab those guys. You got to get go out and get Hunter Henry and hope that maybe he becomes a rest of season target for Drake May or pick up TJ Hawkinson if he's still on waivers and hope that he comes back healthy. You've you've got to keep shooting your shot while you've got middling tight ends to hopefully find the second half of the season breakout. All right, let's take a break and come back with some more matchups. All right, uh, let's jump in. Cincinnati two and four, Cleveland one and five. Hooray! DK Sportsbook line: Cincinnati on the road minus six. The over under is forty one and a half. Cleveland with their, you know, projected at seventeen point eight points. I'm sure they'd kill for that. The return of Nick Chubb is that what we want to make this game about? I mean, that's is where that my, exciting. That's exciting, and that's where my eyes will be when they're on that side of the ball. Um, I don't I, you know no one can tell you other than uh, you know the the Browns OC is Nick Chubb going to get 5 carries 3 well, carries 15 carries is he just back or are they saying hey thank goodness we've got Nick Chubb OC Ken Dorsey said the workload for Sunday is quote still a work in progress we want to make sure that he's available for the long term so he doesn't even know but that does sound like you're talking about a handful of carries uh, I I would not be starting Nick Chubb. And, Would you and that, play Pierre Strong? No, I don't think so because you you still are going to have Chubb in there for some carries. Even if you lose Jerome Ford and he's gone, like let's give Chubb seven carries. If you take seven carries away from Pierre Strong, I I just I'm not excited about that. Even though it's a a decent matchup against the Bengals 
mediocre defense. So do we do we go Najoku and no one else? Uh Jerry Judy is a is a question mark. We've we've talked about some wide receivers that are, you know, the, the, here here's a funny one: the Amari Cooper, uh, Bills. He's active versus Judy. I think this week I'd Who, probably Judy's go Judy. Sitting on a nineteen percent target share. Which yeah, but which uh, obviously yeah, which you got to cut it you in half. You cut it in half. That's yeah, yeah. a nine and a half percent. <laughs> um, Judy or Michael Wilson on Monday night for the uh, Cardinals. I we need more info on on Marv. Info? info information. Do we have anything on Marv? Yet? Oh, why can't we stop it at info? Sure. I mean that is the next letter, right? You know, you stop it at info. That's that's totally fine. You say info. Yeah, they're like, sounds, what? Yeah, that, then it sounds like it you're sounds, in for a beating. It's just stupid is why. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm just trying to help. Calvin Ridley or Jerry Judy? <laughs> Jer Jerry Judy. The question of your life. <laughs> I, I'll go Judy. <laughs> if you have that decision to make, you should go click the exit league yeah. button. No, no. You stay the course. You keep fighting. Keep scr I know. scratching and clawing. Just got to make the playoffs and then get lucky. Did you guys see this stat here that Kyle had put in for us that Joe Burrow has never won in Cleveland as the Bengals starting quarterback? And um I don't think the Bengals have won in Cleveland in seven years. Something like that. So That's wild. And they do you are want me to do it? six point favorites. What almost upset this? Sure, Nick Chubb effect. <laughs> Andy's almost upset of the week. What are you doing? Jason's face tells me I'm right. I was surprised. Six um, points? Six points at home? Uh, Cincinnati's two and four. What if I told you Watson's DK passing line is at 184? I would say that's a little high. <laughs> um, the Browns defense is 10th against quarterbacks, 6th against tight ends, 12th against running backs. They give it up to wide receivers, and the Bengals have quite a few of those. But um, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. They're gonna. It's gonna be a dirty game if Cleveland wins it. But Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, you play them. Chase Brown. Yeah, Chase Brown. Right now, DK rushing line fifty three and a half. Are, are you're starting him over Zach Moss? But are you yeah. are you starting him over other viable options? Yes. Really? Yeah. You're you're are you're a little bit more bullish. Yeah. It like the, um, so let's say uh, Tank Bigsby. I'll take Chase Brown, Bucky Irving. Which we need more, probably need more information here with Rashad White, but I would lean Chase Brown. Uh, Ty Chandler as a spot start against Detroit, I would take Chase Brown. We do have news. We have an update. Marvin Harrison Jr. is practicing. Okay. Okay. That's great to trend towards playing. And especially with the Monday night, if he's practicing now and it's a Monday night game. That's a far cry from what we got from neighbors in Olave yeah. this past. Yeah, you got some hope. Anything else you guys want to talk about in this matchup? Deshaun uh, Watson, you starting him? Don't no, want to talk. No. Deshaun Watson or Will <laughs> Levis. Oh, don't ask that. Houston, 5-1. and one, Green Bay, 4-2. and two, The DraftKings Sportsbook line. Green Bay, minus three at home. Over under is 47 and a half. I want this game. Sure. I want this game. This will be fun. Jordan Love, CJ Stroud. Love has 10 passing touchdowns over the last three starts. He's number one in fantasy points per drop back against zone. He's... Got a league high eight point two percent touchdown rate. Yeah, it'll probably come down. But you know, explosive plays are are kind of happening here. We do have a wide receiver room that's all like, yeah, what the hospital going on ward. Jaden Reed limited with an ankle. Christian Watson limited with an ankle. Dontavian Wicks limited with the shoulder. Romeo Dobbs is healthy. Yeah, he is. His receiving line is forty three and a half. Would you play Romeo Dobbs or Jerry Judy? Romeo Dobbs. Dobbs, Dobbs in this in this matchup, you expect both offenses to be able to score um Dobbs has been you know he is you know he's really the the number one wide receiver for this team as far as obviously routes run he's involved got two touchdowns last week I I, I think he's a fine start this week okay Stroud won't have Nico for a while Diggs Tank Dell Dell was seven for 57 and a touchdown last okay. week yeah signs of life his so, re his receiving line is higher than he even had last week at sixty one and a half. I think this matchup plays very well for him. If you look at targets per route run, targets, all the behind the scenes metrics, Tank Dell was running more of the Nico Collins stuff with Nico out. He's a very good start this week. Joe Mixon, of course. Yeah. Oh, for yeah. sure. He is so good. All right. Sorry, Mike. 
No, no, I I told you he's looked unbelievable. Where are you right now with C.J. Stroud on this season and the expectations on all of that? Uh, he's he's, just, he's, he's a, doing exactly what I thought he would do. He's a great streaming option, but truly, um, this isn't a great matchup. You're on the road. Um, you are the underdog, and there are there are good options in the secondary here for Green Bay. So. Uh, with Joe Mixon's emergence, I think that C.J. Stroud is a questionable, like not like oh you got to bench him, but you got to look at your options because if I had C.J. Stroud and Baker Mayfield, that's an easy Baker to me. What about Stroud or Sam Darnold? Oh, coming man. off the bye against Detroit. Oh man, I'm gonna go Stroud. I'm gonna go talent there. Tucker Craft after the disappointment last week, he was limited with a groin injury. And uh, would you play him or Pitts? I'm gonna. If I had both those guys, I would lean towards Pitts because of the too. matchup. I, like, I would rather have I like Kraft a little more. I would rather have Kraft rest of season. Like if I had to make a transaction as part of that, and I don't have both players on my roster, I'd rather have Kraft. But the matchup against I, Seattle, I don't good. blame you there. I think the just Kraft, is, like it's still, it's still low volume. I mean, he had he had nine targets against Minnesota. That was the where it was like, oh, hey, Tucker Kraft is on the scene, but. Three targets, two, three, nine, the, five, four. That Jeez. was an, an emphatic nine. Um, right now, the number two search on our website: Tank Dell or Brian Thomas Jr. Oof. I'm going to go Brian Thomas. Oof. I'm going to go Tank Dell. I think the the matchup. So, Mike, you got to you got to tie break this. Um, I would. I think I'm going Brian Thomas. Okay. You fools. <laughs> <laughs> It's very close. They're within three spots in my rankings right now. I I will say, getting back to the Tucker Craft question, the the Texas defense has been very good. Um, even when you adjust for schedule against tight ends, they're not giving up much to that position. So it's not the start that I would would love this week. Let's talk about the Miami Dolphins, who are two and three, taking on the three and three Indianapolis Colts, who will get back Anthony Richardson. The DK Sportsbook line here: Indy at home minus three. The over under is forty three and a half. What are you surprised at that? Is I, the line? I'm very surprised that yeah that the, they're not heavier favorites. No, the okay. in, the implied team total for both of them over twenty for both. Yeah, like that. That's a lot. You mean? It seems like it. Uh, I, I don't. Forty three and a half seems right. I don't blame him for to thinking me. that just based on how the Miami games have gone as a whole. Here is what Miami has scored on the year: twenty. Okay, that was sweet. That was two. Uh, 10, 3, 12, 15. 10, 3, 12, 15 total points. They got That's, the bye week to get it right. Maybe. Did, did they get Tua back? <laughs> no, but listen, we put it out on Twitter. Give us some metaphors to describe the last month of Dolphins football without Tua. Okay. Uh, we got one entry. Uh, Azor said, like, mowing your lawn in the rain. Okay. okay. <laughs> that, that would be a bad experience. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't imagine having to do that. Oh, this one. Dustin says, like, sitting on hold with American Airlines. That is that is what it is. That's the right one, Dustin. Oh, my gosh, because I've been there. Um, Asa says, like, poking your dead pet hamster waiting for it to wake up. <laughs> Just do something. Going Yard said, uh, like, watching a dog poop in a beautiful open meadow. I, I don't think – I think yeah. that's better than the dolphins have been. And then Wheelow said, like, getting a root canal via your <laughs> rectum. <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> – that's okay. a deep root canal. That's a panic alarm. Yeah, I, I knew not to hit the button again. So, yeah, it's not been good. Uh, Tyler Huntley, pro bowler, uh, gets a shot off the bye. I'm, see, what I thought you were reacting to was the fact that the Colts are barely favored in this game. No. When no. you're at home, when it's Tyler Huntley, this, this is the Anthony Richardson uh, line. I, I believe it. I think if Joe Flacco was the quarterback, you'd, you'd have, you know, a four-and-a-half point line or something like that. So... Uh, Anthony Richardson looks like he is going to start. He has a DK passing line in there for 193 and a half. So that is the expectation right now. He's he's going to be the starter, which means Michael Pittman Jr., Josh Downs. Hey. What do you do? At Downs I'm fine with because of volume. Pittman, no way. I'm not touching that. The Dolphins, even schedule adjusted, are the number one team in fantasy against quarterbacks. They give up 9.4 a game. They're number four against wideouts. They're number four against tight ends. Do you know why? Because they like to let people run the ball. It's because they're never in the lead, ever, and the other team is able to run the ball. When those two things happen, this is just like what happened with Carolina last year, where it was like it wasn't that they you know can't get scored on by a quarterback or wide receiver, it's that they don't need to. 
And so I expect that to happen again. But the, the fact that the line is a little bit closer here is maybe helpful. Like, I would love, love – if I'm starting Anthony Richardson, you are praying for a pick six right off the bat. You want that pick six? You want two pick sixes immediately because then they will have to throw the ball and, oh, and I thought keep you up just, and score. I thought you were say they had to put Joe Flacco in then. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, they'll, they'll let him finish the game. So it, then it moves to – a, a different discussion, like you said. Right now, Dolphins 30th against fantasy running backs, giving up over 26 points a game. Breaking John, news, they don't have any. Johnny Taylor, Goodson. Johnny Taylor did not practice. Trey Sermon, the uh, second string running back, who has not been very good, did not practice with a knee injury. Tyler Goodson is sitting there waiting for someone to take the chance. Against a good Tennessee team on the road last week he was eight for 51 6.4 a carry he had a 33 yard long um I, I think he's I think he's an actual and he will catch passes I think he's Richardson, an actual good play Richardson obviously is not going to throw the ball to the running back as much as Joe Flacco does uh for me personally I'm sitting here today waiting on Thursday news to see like is Jonathan Taylor out again is Trey Sermon out again because then I am making the Tyler Goodson, Javante Williams decision. Man, I I can't. I really would be <laughs> shocked. I'm, like I'm right now. I'm just. I'm waiting for that. It's, if those two guys are out, Goodson's probably in for me. I'd be very surprised if Jonathan Taylor plays. the The news right now is Sermon, and the last thing I saw, which obviously the Thursday practice report will say a lot, was pretty negative. So, good. If Goodson's alone, I mean, that yes. would be an could easy. Could he be Greatson? Yeah, I think so, and I think he would be much better than Don't, don't put that type of pressure on him. Just let him be good. Mm, yeah, I guess the bar the bar for Tyler should just be Goodson. Yes. Maybe it's more like good dad. You know what I mean? Good. Oh, you moved the sun? Yeah, it's not going good to great. It's yeah. going, no. Boston. <laughs> All right. I won't. Uh... Look, I will settle for Tyler O'Kason. Uh, yeah, okay, son. <laughs> Let's move on. None of you are playing Michael Pittman, are you? Uh, he's uh, he's in my lineup right now because Marv I thought was going to be out. So hopefully not. Yeah, hope hopefully not. What, what about that is the, what, what about him versus Jerry Judy? I'd play Pittman over. Yeah, Judy. I'd, I'd play Pittman. Okay. He, his line is forty nine and a half. Uh, Devon Achan's line though forty four. That's um, that's not good. He's coming off a concussion. He did have a full practice, is that right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. He he looks like he is um gonna play. How does that fit in with the fact the offense can't really move it? And Raheem Mostert got nineteen opportunities. He was you're hungry for more. Mostert or Javante? Mostert or Javante, Ooh. I would lean Mostert. Uh the the Bucky Indian Irving or uh, Mostert? But I'd go Bucky there. Yeah, I mean assuming Rashad White is out. Yeah, that that's a that's a depth chart health thing. Tyreek Hill. I'd yeah. go Mostert. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, Tyreek. Play him, right? You, yeah, you just got to keep playing. What was playing. the target total last week? He was nine uh, targets. Zero. No, nine targets, six for 69. Uh, zero. I would be A thrilled. Nice. I'd be thrilled with that. Yeah. yeah uh, you, I think you start him. Waddle is someone that. It's a you, bad defense. The Colts are terrible. Yeah. They, and they're terrible across the board. Uh, their offense. They don't play favorites. Has done enough to keep. The, the score's high enough to where it's like the other team has to pass, has to run. I, I, you know, Waddle this, or a grilled cheese sandwich? Waddle. Yeah. I, I don't think Over grilled, grilled cheese? Yeah, I, I think so. What if I put some tomato soup with it? <laughs> okay. I mean, that's two for one. You okay. can't compare two okay. things against right. one. I just was checking. I mean, I'd half, take the two Half pack. a grilled cheese sandwich in the soup or waddle. So you don't get the full sandwich. Oh, half. that's just going to help my caloric intake. I'll take that. Okay. I'll take the half. But so, so look, Waddle, put him on the bench and just cross the fingers because when two is back, Waddle or Judy? Oh, just stop asking Judy. <laughs> stop asking Judy questions. <laughs> okay, that was my fault. I brought him up right. again. Waddle, to ask something else. Waddle or Pittman, same game. No, Pittman. I go Pittman. I agree. There, yeah. Um, but what are you doing with Achan? I I, I don't want to leave this game before that's addressed. Like, are you? Like, what are you doing? I. So I, I've I've brought this up without Tua there when he is running against stacked boxes. That is not how you know a, a hundred and ninety pound running back is set to succeed. This matchup, though, you know, you look at the last couple matchups: uh, Tennessee, um, New England. 
those those were the games that Devon Achan last played in. Those are those are not the best matchups. I think Indianapolis is a bad defense across the board. I'm fine starting Achan. Achan or Tank Bigsby. Um. Uh, assuming you're going Bigsby. assuming Etienne is yeah, out, yeah, of I would go Bigsby. I, I I do want to highlight because the world, I mean it's it's broad, but seven point eight a carry for Achan last year, three point three a carry for Achan this year. I mean that's just that's and apples that's, and oranges. It's this, not though because he played with Tua and got two point four a carry with Tua. So I but mean, that, but that's one of his five games. Uh, two point seven, one point five. He was four point four uh, in his three carries last week. I think that he's still he's a low end running back too. Anytime you have fifty six attempts, I think you can look a little bit fairly at the situation. Yeah, I mean it's it it's shouldn't really, be dependent on only to to ever run a good run the ball well. But it's it's also he gets work in the receiving game, and that's where you know you look at those first couple weeks when okay he was two point four a carry. He was the running back seven because he was seven for seventy six in the passing game. He's still bursty. And looks the same as he did last year. It's just the opportunities have been different. I, I don't agree. Okay. Uh, and Mostert ran for 4.2 last week with Tyler Huntley. And if you have to conditionalize his size with running between the tackles, it's changing the entire – it's changing the way you look at Devon Achan and where he was drafted. Like you're saying he's a, he's, he's a running back that only works in a certain system or a certain way – with a certain this or that, that that's a difference of one hundred percent. I mean, I mean, but that's that's what the truth is. I mean, the truth is you have to look at him completely differently without Tua. He's but that not, means you're not drafting him like you know you were drafting him ahead of like JT. Some people were. Oh doing. yeah, I mean, what is the conversation here? If if this is whether is that maybe Devon a Achan was not, a good draft pick so far? That's no, a, no, 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 no. That's not the conversation. The conversation is the hope for Achan was that he was a starting caliber running back in the NFL on a week-to-week -week basis, not a the, the the system has to be right or I have to get targets or I have to have a breakaway run. It was like, can he become a premier back, like a Gibbs, like a Bijan, like somebody like that? And if we have to say that he can't do that unless, you know, everything's perfect, I think that's a big adjustment on our expectations. That's all I'm saying. Sure. Um, Detroit's 4-1, and one, Minnesota's 5-0. and oh. I want this game. 51 is the over-under. DraftKings Sportsbook line is Minnesota minus one and a half. Yeah, th this is the one that scares me. I'm very excited. I mean, two great teams, great teams, two well-coached teams, um, two teams that are great, uh, you know, on the line of scrimmage. Uh, divisional matchup. There's there's nothing NFL football-wise that you don't love about this game. Fantasy-wise, so many startable assets, important assets, high over-under, this is this is just one of those games though where it's like because it's divisional, and these defenses are both really really good. I wonder if they will smack each other in the mouth a little bit more than us fantasy fans want. That's my fear for this game. Well, the the departure of Aiden Hutchinson is going to stifle a pass rush, yeah, um, and the will. Vikings offensive line has been good. So we we'd love to see Darnold bounce back after a bye. They still haven't lost a football game. It's really tight. They're favored. Who do you have winning the ball game? Let's start there. I've got Detroit. Uh, I'll take Minnesota. I lean the Detroit side. I think it's going to be close. Goff, I mean, this this is wild. He has two passing touchdowns in four career starts in Minnesota. That's not great. No. But for how many, for how a dominator, he's been a domester fire in Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, when you look at Jared Goff's games and you – say how many passing touchdowns does he have you got to just look well how many rushing touchdowns did they have it's not necessarily that he had a bad game it's that they might go the other way and that's that's a, a reality you could deal with all the time when you've got Gibbs Montgomery in this offensive line however the Vikings run defense has been elite this season they're number two in fantasy points given up to running backs going back to last season they were they were I think seventh so this is a carryover of this Flora, uh, Flores defense where uh, not that you're not starting Gibbs or Monty, but I think that's good for the passing game, good for Jared Goff and the weapons there. So are you tempering the expectations for Gibbs and Monty being a committee backfield against the number two defense? Sure, you, you temper it in the sense that it is completely irrelevant. There's no team that can bench either one of those guys. You just have to go, I want, I want to make sure I get, you know, I'm hoping for 10 fantasy points and half mm -hmm. PPR. Mike Jefferson's receiving line is a ridiculous ninety-two and a half yards. Yep. Is it really? 
That's awesome. He averages 102.6 at home in Minnesota. The one area where the Lions are giving up a ton of fantasy points is to wide receivers. Yep. So this is why you like Jordan Addison. Yeah, as the secondary option there. Yep. Yeah, and, and with it looks like, I mean, too early to know whether Aaron Jones is going to start, but the fact that they traded for Cam Akers, Aaron Jones is saying he's not sure. Uh, you know, I would lean that at the very least they got a banged up running back, you know, uh, room. They did come out and, I mean, for take it for what you will, he came out in the press conference and said verbatim, this move has nothing to do with Aaron Jones' status. It could be they're just they're disappointed with the like the third string, wasn't it? Uh, you just said they wanted was it Gaskin. They wanted depth, and it doesn't have any bearing on Jones. The uh, Gas Man. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, the, the Gas Man's there. Um, and it's the the weird thing about Aaron Jones is like when he left the game, everything there were it was oh, it's a hip injury. Now it's being listed as a hamstring injury. So it's just you got to keep your eye on it. Hamstrings connected to the yeah, to the hip, hip bone. bone. Yeah, yeah, I know that song. Hopefully, it's still connected. Uh. Amon Ra, yes. Yep. Jamison Williams. Yep. Jamison Williams, let's take inventory of the season so far. He is the wide receiver. What do you think? I would guess. This is, he's had a buy. Oh, with a buy, maybe wide receiver 20. I'll go higher than that. I was going to go higher, but then I'll you go, said the I'll go, uh, what, what are we at, 14 right now? Let me get it by points per game. That would be better, right? Okay. Yeah, sure. Points uh, per game, I'm going to say 14. Okay, Mike. Sure, 14. He's 13. Oh. 13 in points per game, 23 on the season. Um, there's, a, there's a pretty good matchup for him. Um, like we, like I said, you can't run the ball well or easily on the Minnesota Vikings, but they are giving up the third highest explosive pass play rate in the NFL. That's those over 15-plus yards. That's kind of where Jamison Williams' big fantasy production Jameson has come. Jamison ahead of Amon Ra on the year in points per game. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, the – the big plays have been hitting. He seems like he can get that kind of in a Waddle Tyreek way. There's too much to account for in this def defensively for this team, and you can lull teams to a, you know, Monty. You need eleven guys to bring him down. Gibbs too explosive. Laporta, Amon Ra across the middle. It just seems Tim they, Patrick. I mean, Tim Patrick had sure. 68 yards and was an inch away from a touchdown last week. It's, it's so it's like you lull them to sleep and you take two or three shots and it, and you can hit them. And it's just the you know box score hunting Jamison. It's I don't think we really know 100 percent yet. Like what is when this team like what is he for this offense of the first two weeks nine targets, eleven targets, huge games. Then you have the game against Arizona. They they win 20 to 13, but it's three targets in that game and then it's two blowouts so like the 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 volume disappeared for him it so is it is that a buy low opportunity yeah is it supposed to be well i mean he still came th the targets weren't there but the yardage on the touchdown was so fantasy production i don't think you could buy low but it's a is it is he closer to that more like a four or five target guy or that close to a double digit target guy that he was in the first two weeks. If Aaron Jones is out, Ty Chandler against the tough defense. He, yeah, it's it's still a fine opportunity. Malik Neighbors will have a full practice today. A little update for you. He will then meet with an independent neurologist okay. later today. Um I saw somebody typing a Marvin Harrison update and then deleting it. I think we had already shared it, so well, I th I think he's still in the protocol was the headline there. Yeah, it oh yeah uh, he's he, not out of the protocol, he's just no, it's just a it's a Monday night game, so Thursday is the, is the first practice. So the, if he is actually doing anything limited on that first one, that's a good sign. Yeah, oftentimes the protocol, you watch the progression of the week, and, and this is the, the right day to have it hit on a Monday night football game. Can you hand me that crown back there, Jason? Okay. It's right behind you. <laughs> I, I, will wear, I will wear my clown wig under protest. Samesies. <laughs> I didn't make this one. <laughs> well, no, it's Calvin Ridley. It? Calvin Ridley, the process. What do you mean? What, eight what do you targets. Mean protest? Eight targets for Calvin Ridley and zero yards. Is this Jason's? Is this Jason's uh, crown? Crown because it, it was. It could be mine too. Oh, if it's it must be. Was yours. it big or it was, small? It was way too big. Oh, that's mine. All right, look, Trevor Lawrence <laughs> slipped under the passing line we brought up last week in the parlay parte. Um, Justin Herbert went well over the 195 and a half, and Calvin Ridley on eight targets had zero yards receiving. So 
two crowns or one crown, two clowns, and we're jumping into this week's pick. Yeah, Calvin Ridley and Will Levis. That's the clowns. Um, I'll hop in here first. I, I I really like mine. He's my start of the week. Uh, so I hope he can have over 60 and a half receiving yards. But Deontay Johnson, uh, he's over this line in three or four games. The matchup against Washington is perfect. As I outlaid, I think this is a, uh, you know, barring injury, Deontay Johnson should clear 60 and a half yes. receiving yards. This will be my last over pick if it doesn't hit because I've <laughs> hit every under pick I've made this year. Um, Evan Ingram, 40 plus receiving yards. He had 10 catches last week. Uh, I, I think 40 is a pretty low bar. And three out of four tight ends that faced New England went over that line already. Evan Ingram was just too important, and you saw it right away. Like the second he's back in the offense, yeah. Trevor Lawrence, you know, he, he's the one. He's a go-to. Yeah, he's he's a go-to guy. Geno Smith, two hundred and fifty plus passing yards. He has only hit this line five straight times, <laughs> and is in what we are hoping is the game of the week. He leads the NFL in passing yards and attempts, and uh, both these teams are top three in neutral pace. Like. This should be a fast and furious game, and I think Gino can clear 250 yards. All right, that was Fantasy Forecast presented by DraftKings Pick 6. Download the new DraftKings Pick 6 app now and use the code BALLERS. That's the code BALLERS for new customers to play uh, to pay $5 and get $50 in Pick 6 credits. All right, that'll do it for today's show. We got more matchups, the Fantasy Faceoff, probably some news to talk about tomorrow. It's going to be a good time. Don't miss it. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Must be 18 and over. Age and eligibility restrictions vary by jurisdiction. Void where prohibited. One per new customer. Non-withdrawable. Pick 6 credits expire in six months. Limited time offer. See terms at pick6.draftkings.com slash promos.